As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we celebrate Friday of the 15th week of Ordinary Time. This Mass is celebrated for the needs and intentions of the parishioners of Our Lady of Guadalupe in South Hutchinson. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for their faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. When Hezekiah was mortally ill, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Put your house in order, for you are about to die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, O Lord, remember how faithfully and wholeheartedly I conducted myself in your presence, doing what was pleasing to you. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. In three days you shall go up to the Lord's temple. I will add fifteen years to your life. I will rescue you from this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will, shield, I will be a shield to this city. Isaiah then ordered a poultice of figs to be taken and applied to the boil that he might recover. Then Hezekiah asked, What is a sign that I shall go up to the temple of the Lord? Isaiah answered, This will be a sign for you from the Lord, that he who will do what he has promised. See, I will make the shadow cast by the sun on the stairway to the terrace of Ahaz go back the ten steps it has advanced. So the sun came back, the steps it had advanced. The gospel of the Lord, I'm sorry, the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Once I said, in the noontime of life I must depart. To the, gates of the never the wor to the gates of the netherworld I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. I said, I, so sh I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow man among those who dwell in the world. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. My dwelling, like a, like a shepherd's tent, is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who severs the last thread. You save my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Those live whom the Lord protects. Yours is the life of my spirit. You have given me health and life. You save my life, O Lord, I shall not die. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, 
See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions but only the priests could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned these innocent men. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this beautiful Friday morning, uh, a few words about our gospel, a few words about our first reading. Our gospel today uh, stresses the importance that the man's and human beings' well-being uh, take precedence over uh, human law, over human ritual, more precisely. Uh, Jesus wanted to stress that uh, his men, it was better that his men should eat what was necessary for them to survive uh, rather than to observe the strict law of the lab Sabbath, and that is doing work uh, on the Sabbath. Uh, we can see then that uh, we apply this in the universal church to see that uh, human laws or mere church laws, they can be dispensed. They can be, uh, they, we can, a authority can dispense from them. A bishop can dispense from a church law. It, if, if it is, however, a divine law, no one can dispense from that. Let me give you an example. Uh, for instance, uh, we, it may be that uh, first cousins may be in love. Uh, uh, it is an ecclesiastical law that they shall not marry. Uh, it, the bishop can dispense from that. Um, however, if half brother and half sister, or step brother, step sister, are, are uh, half brother, half sister in love, then uh, they cannot marry. That is a divine law. Uh, that brother and sister shall not marry, and et cetera. Those who have close uh, blood relationships are, cannot, are prohibited from married by God's divine law. Uh, and so uh, it is good to bear that in mind, that uh, human laws, and in our case church laws, can be dispensed of by an authority. Divine laws, no one can di dispense or change from those, especially regarding uh, today, uh, such things such as marriage uh, and also uh, of things of life, uh, the protection of life, the dignity of life. Our reading today, first reading today, uh, comes to us con from this continued uh, tour that we're taking through the book of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, today, we, it comes from chapter 38. Uh, the main individual uh, here that is being treated is uh, Hezekiah. Uh, Hezekiah would have been a 7th century uh, uh, king, uh, a ruler uh, of Israel, and uh, he receives the bad news that he's going to face death and to prepare himself. And this comes from the lips of Isaiah. Uh, and he turns his face to the wall and he prays to God. And how, n how human that is for us to do, as we are sometimes faced with the news of grave illness, uh, perhaps even of death, uh, we turn... Uh, toward God, and we begin a conversation in earnest, generally. That is part of God's plan, and it is mysterious that God would lead us in such a manner to take such a journey. But in one sense, being faced with our mortality uh, is something that is good and something that is healthy, something that we do quite frequently, even yearly on Ash Wednesday. And sometimes we're called to do it, uh, even as we have surprise illnesses or debilities uh, come up in our lives or in the lives of those whom we love very much. And so he, Hezekiah uh, reminds our Lord uh, uh, of his disposition, of his good disposition toward him, and uh, uh, I conducted myself in your presence and, do, and doing what is, was pleasing to you. Uh, and Hezekiah, if you will, has a reaching out, a a, not merely a changing of heart, but a, a, a cry from within 
to our Lord to grant him more life. And this, again, is something that is very good. It is good and healthy for us that we have a strong desire to carry on in this world. Uh, it is a good to, that we have a reasonable fear uh, of death uh, and respect uh, for life. Uh, and then we have the wonderful response. Uh, Isaiah comes back uh, that uh, our Lord will add 15 years onto Hezekiah's life uh, and that his illness will be cured. And then I must mention also Hezekiah has his typical ask for a sign. And, our, and Isaiah said, this is the sign. Uh, see that the shadow cast by the sun on the stairway of the terrace of Ahaz, it will go back 10 steps. And people uh, have sometimes commented that, well, this is impossible that the laws of nature shall be broken uh, in some miraculous way. It is not. Uh, we believe that even uh, the laws of nature uh, do not constrain God, uh, that God, the author and creator of nature, uh, can and does uh, work miracles uh, on occasion uh, through nature. You know, if we're thinking about this, let's think about the 1917 uh, miracle of the sun that occurred on October 25th in Portugal in Fatima, uh, something that the laws of nature were set aside uh, as this wonderful miracle uh, took place. We turn to our Lord and we thank our Lord for this wonderful life uh, in all of his challenges that we have here today. We also thank him for his awesome power and might. Having listened to God's word, let us now have the courage and faith to bring our prayers and petitions to the Father. We pray for the church throughout the world May our Lord graciously look graciously upon us and give us strength to share the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to abortion, to a, for a respect of human life. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for Christian marriages, that men and women united in holy matrimony may be true to one another in exclusive love, open to life. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick, especially those of our parish, that Christ our healer may touch their lives. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we give to God in silence our own needs and wants. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died in God's mercy. May they be in his presence in his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O eternal Father, hear our prayers. Answer them through Christ your Son, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we may, might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we wait his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Carl, our Bishop, the whole order of Bishop, all the clergy, 
those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by, that, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is, is yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen.